Kin's Wars of Unification were a series of military campaigns launched in the late 3rd century BC by the Qin state against the other six major states, Han, Zhao, Jan, Wei, Chu and Qi, within the territories that formed modern China. By the end of the wars in 221 BC, Qin had unified most of the states and occupied some lands south of the Yangtze River. The territories conquered by Qin served as the foundation of the Qin dynasty. Background Over the course of the Warring States period, the Qin state had evolved to become the most powerful of the seven major states in China. In 238 BC, Ying Zheng came to the throne of Qin after eliminating his political rivals Lu Buvai and Lao Ai. With help from Li Si, Wei Liao and others, Ying Zheng formulated a plan for conquering the other six major states and unifying China. The plan, which focuses on annexing each state individually, is based on allying with distant states and attacking nearby ones. One of the 36 stratagems, its key steps were, ally with Yan and Qi, hold down Wei and Chu, conquer Han and Zhao, conquest of Han. Han was the weakest of the seven states and had previously been subject to numerous attacks by Qin, which caused it to be drastically and further weakened. In 230 BCE, the Qin army led by Interior Minister Teng moved south, crossed the Yellow River and conquered Zheng, the capital of Han. Within one year, King An of Han surrendered and Han came under Qin's control. The territory of Han was reorganized to form the Qin Empire's Yingshuang Commandery, with the Commandery capital at Yangzhai. Conquest of Zhao In 236 BCE, while Zhao was attacking Yan, Qin used the opportunity to send two separate forces to invade Zhao. The Qin army led by Wang Jian conquered the Zhao territories of Eyu and Liao Yang, while the other Qin army under the command of Wan Yi and Yang Duan he captured Yi and Anyang. Zhao lost nine cities and its military prowess was weakened. Two years later, Qin planned to attack Han, but feared that Zhao might render support to Han. So it ordered Wan Yi to lead an army to attack Zhao's Ping Yang and Wu Sheng. More than 100,000 soldiers were killed in the battle. The Zhao army was defeated and its commander, Hu Zhe, was killed in action. In 233 BC, Wan Yi's army crossed Mount Taihang and conquered the Zhao territories of Chile and Yian both located southeast of present-day Shijiazhuang, Hebei. In 232 BC, the Qin forces split into two groups to attack Fanwu and Lang Meng, but were defeated by the Zhao army led by Li Mu. Wan Yi fled to Yan to escape punishment for his defeat. However, the Zhao forces also sustained heavy losses and could only retreat to defend their capital, Handan. In the following two years, Zhao was struck by two natural disasters, an earthquake and a severe famine. In 229 BC, Qin took advantage of the situation to launch a pincer attack from the north and south on Handan, Zhao's capital. Three Qin armies embarked from Shangdi, Jingxing and Henai, respectively led by Wang Jian, Jiang Lei and Yang Duan He, to coordinate the attack on Handan. Li Mu and Sima Shang were put in command of the Zhao army. Li Mu ordered his troops to build defensive structures and avoid direct confrontation with the enemy. The Qin forces were unable to advance further and both sides reached a stalemate. The Qin state bribed Guo Kai, a Zhao minister, to sow discord between King Qian of Zhao and Lei Mu. The king doubted Li Mu's loyalty and ordered Li to hand over his authority to his deputies, Zhao Kong and Yan Zhu. When Li Mu refused to obey, the king became more suspicious of him and ordered his men to take Li by surprise and capture him. Li Mu was executed in prison later on King Qian's order. In 228 BCE, after learning that Li Mu had been replaced, the Qin forces attacked, defeated the Zhao army and conquered. Dongyang. Zhao Kong was killed in action while Yan Zhu escaped after his defeat. Seven months later, Qin forces occupied Handan and captured King Qian, bringing an end to Zhao's existence. 
Prince Jia, King Qian's elder brother, escaped from Handan and went to Dai, where, with help from Zhao's remnants, he declared himself king of Dai. In 222 BC, Dai was conquered by the Qin army led by Wang Jian's son, Wang Ben. Prince Jia was taken captive. Conquest of Yan. In 228 BC, after the fall of Zhao, the Qin army led by Wang Jian and stationed in Zhongshan prepared for an offensive on Yan. Ju Wu, a Yan minister, proposed to King Shi of Yan to form alliances with Dai, Qi and Chu, and make peace with the Zhongyu in the north. In order to counter Qin's invasion, however, Crown Prince Dan felt that the alliance strategy was unlikely to succeed, so he sent Jing Kei to assassinate Ying Zheng, the king of Qin. Jing Kei went to Qin by pretending to be an envoy, bringing with him a map of Du Kang and the head of Fan Wu Ji, a turncoat Qin general. Jing Kei failed and died in his attempt on Ying Zheng's life. In 226 BC, using the assassination attempt as an excuse, Ying Zheng ordered Wang Jian to lead an army to attack Yan, with Meng Wu as Wang's deputy. The Qin forces defeated the Yan army and Yan's reinforcements from Dai in a battle on the eastern bank of the Yi River, after which they conquered Ji, the capital of Yan. King Shi of Yan and his son, Crown Prince Dan, led their remaining forces on a retreat to the Liaodong Peninsula. A Qin army led by Li Xin pursued the retreating Yan forces to the Yan River, where they engaged enemy forces and destroyed the bulk of Yan's army. Later, King Shi ordered Crown Prince Dan's execution and sent his son's head to Qin as an apology for the assassination attempt. Qin accepted the offer and did not attack Yan for the next three years. In 222 BCE, the Qin army led by Wang Ben invaded Liaodong and destroyed Yan's remaining forces and captured Qingxi, bringing an end to Yan's existence. The former territories of Yan were partitioned and reorganized to form the Qin Empire's Yu Yang, Baiping, Liaoxi and Liaodong commanderies. Conquest of Wei. In 225 BCE, a 600,000 strong Qin army led by Wang Ben conquered more than 10 cities on the northern border of Chu as a precautionary move to guard the flank from possible attacks from Chu while Qin was invading Wei. Wang Ben then led his forces north to attack and besiege Daliang, the capital of Wei. As Daliang was situated at the concourse of the Suai and Ying rivers and the Hong Canal, its geographic location gave it a natural defensive advantage. Besides, the moat around Daliang was very wide and all the five gates of the city had drawbridges, making it even more difficult for Qin forces to penetrate the city. The Wei troops used the opportunity to strengthen their fortifications and defenses. Wang Ben came up with the idea of directing the waters from the Yellow River and the Hong Canal to flood Daliang. Wang Ben's troops worked for three months to redirect the water flow while maintaining the siege on Daliang, and succeeded in the plan. Daliang was heavily flooded and over 100,000 people died, including civilians. King Jia of Wei surrendered and Wei came under Qin's control. Qin established the commanderies of Dang and Sishui in the former Wei territories. Conquest of Chu. In 224 BC, Ying Zheng called for a meeting with his subjects to discuss his plans for the invasion of Chu. Wang Jian felt that they needed at least 600,000 troops for the campaign, while Li Xing claimed that less than 200,000 men would suffice. Ying Zheng dismissed Wang Jian's idea and ordered Li Xin and Meng Wu to lead an army of about 200,000 to attack Xu. Wang Jian retired on the grounds of illness. The Qin army scored initial victories as Li Xin's force conquered Ping Yu while Meng Wu's captured King Qu. After conquering Yan, Li Xin led his army west to rendezvous with Meng Wu at Chengfu. The Chu army, led by Xiang Yan, had been avoiding using its main force to resist the Qin invaders while waiting for an opportunity to launch a counterattack. During this time, Lord Changping, a relative of Ying Zheng who descended from the Chu royal family, incited a rebellion in a city previously conquered by Li Xin. 
He also prepared for a surprise attack on Li Xin later. The Chu army led by Xiang Yan secretly followed Li Xin at high speed for three days and three nights before launching a surprise attack. Lord Changping's forces followed suit from behind and joined Xiang Yan's army in attacking Li Xin. Most of Li Xin's forces were destroyed in the battle. Upon learning of Li Xin's defeat, Ying Zheng personally visited Wang Jian, who was in retirement, apologized for not heeding Wang's advice earlier, and invited Huang back to serve in the court. Per Wang Jian's request, Ying Zheng put him in command of 600,000 troops and assigned Meng Wu to be Wang's deputy. Wang Jian was aware that the king would doubt his loyalty because he wielded too much military power, so he frequently sent messengers back to the king, requesting for rewards for his family so as to reduce the king's suspicions. In 224 BC, Wang Jian's army passed through the south of Chen and made camp at Pingyu. The Chu forces, led by Xiang Yan, used their full strength to launch an offensive on the Qin camp but failed. Wang Jian ordered his troops to defend their positions firmly and avoid advancing further into Chu territory. After failing to lure the Qin army to attack, Xiang Yan ordered a retreat and Wang Jian seized the opportunity to launch a surprise counterattack. The Qin forces pursued the retreating Chu forces to Quinan, where Xiang Yan was killed in action in the ensuing battle. In 223 BC, Qin launched another attack on Chu and captured Shouchun, the capital of Chu. Fu, the king of Chu, was captured and Chu was annexed by Qin. The following year, Wang Jian and Meng Wu led the Qin army to attack the Wuyu region, which was inhabited by the Baiyu, and captured the descendants of the royal family of Yu. The conquered Wuyu territories became the Qin Empire's Kuaizhi commandery. Conquest of Qi. In 264 BC, Tian Jian ascended the throne of Qi and was assisted by his mother, the Queen Derja, in managing state affairs. Qin bribed Hu Sheng, the Qi Chancellor, to dissuade King Jian from helping the other states while they were being attacked by Qin. By 221 BC, Qi was the only state in China that had yet to be conquered by Qin. Qi hurriedly mobilized its armies to its western borders as a safeguard against a possible Qin invasion, even though its military was not well equipped and morale was low. In the same year, Ying Zheng used Qi's rejection of a meeting with a Qin envoy as an excuse to attack Qi. The Qin army, led by Wang Ben, avoided direct confrontation with enemy forces stationed on Qi's western borders and advanced into Qi's heartland via a southern detour from Yan. The Qin forces met with little resistance as they passed through Qi territory and eventually arrived at Linzi, the capital of Qi. King Jian was caught by surprise and, after being persuaded by Hu Sheng, he surrendered to Qin without putting up a fight. The former territories of Qi were reorganized to form the Qin Empire's Qi and Langya commanderies. Aftermath in 221 BC, after the conquest of Qi, Ying Zheng proclaimed himself Qin Shi Huang and established the Qin dynasty. The Qin Empire was divided into 36 prefectures, with Zhanyang as its capital. Qin Shi Huang created a centralized state and empire that would become the bedrock of future Chinese dynasties. Although the Qin dynasty lasted for 15 years only, its influence on Chinese history lasted for centuries to come. In 209 BC, during the reign of Qin Shi, Qin Shi Wang's son and successor, Chen Sheng and Wu Guang started an uprising in Days Zhang to overthrow the Qin dynasty due to the Qin government's brutal and oppressive policies. Although the revolt was crushed by imperial forces, several other rebellions also started consecutively all over China over the next three years. The last Qin ruler, Ziying, surrendered to a rebel force led by Liu Bang in 206 BC, bringing an end to the Qin dynasty. Several of the rebel forces claimed to be restoring the former states that were annexed by Qin and numerous pretenders to the thrones of the former states emerged.
In 2006 BC, Zhanyang was occupied and sacked by the forces of Xiang Yu, a descendant of the Chu general Xiang Yan.